Well, we're talking about pandemic crisis and how some companies have managed to revive, some have survived and some have flourished. And Webhub uh, Global is one company which in a sense has really benefited because of COVID crisis. Last two quarters, the growth and numbers are back largely because in the physical retail has become digital retail. And for those companies who are able to understand trends and adopt technology in terms of adaptation and early interpretation of trends are significantly benefiting. So what's the way forward for uh, Webhub Global? The fact that there is a second wave of corona in Europe, is that likely to impact the mood point? And this is the big quarter for them uh, in terms of Christmas. So uh, let me now bring on board the group CFO, Vineet uh, Ganirwal, to talk about first what transpired for Webhub Global for the quarter gone by and what is in store at a time when there is a, a fear of a big massive uh, lockdown in parts of Europe. Vineet, good morning. Thank you for joining us. So walk us through first your numbers for the quarter gone by. Looks like uh, your online, the resilience of your platform and online shopping model has only become more impactful because of the coronavirus. Good morning, Nikunj. Good morning to you and your viewers. Uh, thank you for having me here. Yes, uh, the quarter was fantastic. So we continued the momentum uh, we saw in quarter one. Uh, we were earlier growing at the range of about 13, 14% year on year till last year, uh, but we saw a big jump in quarter one and the momentum continues in quarter two. So uh, definitely this uh, pandemic is helping us uh, with increased uh, uh, number of people sitting at home and hence increased TV viewership, increased uh, web traffic. We being a digital player, definitely we are getting some benefit out of that. So right place at the right time uh, and we are uh, reaping the benefit out of it. But one big thing uh, which uh, would have happened in uh, quarter one and quarter two is the agility with which we have adapted to the situation. So speaking about the numbers, uh, quarter two was 24% uh, year on year revenue growth. However, the B2C uh, retail segment, which is our focus, grew by 29% uh, year on year on the back of 32% in quarter one. Profit uh, uh, EBITDA margin expanded to 16.5% and year on year growth of about 42%. So uh, great momentum in both the last quarters and uh, quite encouraging for us. If historical track records are anything to go by, this quarter, which is the Christmas quarter, historically has been the strongest quarter because it's obvious that's the time when Christmas kicks in. Will this quarter be as strong as last quarter or because of what is happening to Europe second wave of coronavirus, some lockdowns, you actually could not be in for a great quarter. Uh, you are right. So this quarter is traditionally uh, the biggest quarter for us. Uh, very high season, gifting gifting season, and definitely revenue profits are all at uh, all-time highs. So we continue to see the momentum uh, in October, and which is uh, the peak month of election noise. So. Seeing the results in October, we are very much optimistic about our performance in Q3 and going forward, which is why we even raised our guidance. So earlier, we used to give a guidance of 15 to 17% uh, in constant currency growth for our retail revenues. And for H2, now we increased it to 18 to 20%. So we are pretty confident of uh, our performance in Q3 and Q4 for this year. And uh, we'll definitely see the momentum going forward as well. Okay. How do you plan to compete against the big boys here? Whether it is eBay or Amazon? Because ultimately you are a marketplace and some would argue that the efficiency and the search capabilities of the US tech firms is going to be much more stronger than your capability. Uh, how can you grow at a, in a space which is dominated by two or three large U.S. tech companies? So we are into uh, home commerce. Uh, we are electronic retail into home commerce and, and uh, web. So we have our own proprietary TV channels and web platforms. We also sell uh, in marketplace. So we are into digital commerce. So we are into Amazon, eBay, uh, Fugo, etc. And we are also into social commerce. So we sell through Facebook, Instagrams, and all the social platforms. So uh, on Amazon, eBay, uh, and all the other marketplaces, 
uh, our revenue is actually uh, growing more than 200% year on year. So our deep discount model and our vertically, vertically integrated supply chain gives us a significant cost advantage over others. So in the marketplaces, where, whereas we are competing with millions of other such players, still we are able to command our positioning in terms of the product superiority. And we are seeing the same, in fact, much higher rate of growth out there. So uh, that gives us a lot of confidence is that we have the right product uh, and the right uh, pricing uh, strategy and hence uh, we'll definitely be able to continue uh, the same uh, performance uh, year on year okay in terms of consumption patterns and how they've changed during this time anything you can share with us we also saw an increased focus on um, essentials uh, for example reduced demand for non-essentials how has the mix really changed uh, uh, you know has do you see it as a temporary shift what products are picking up particularly in festive season so we have a ai based uh, product development system so we keep on uh, tracking what's uh, what the customer is trying to look for what the customer needs at the particular time particular period of time so at the initial uh, pandemic period in quarter one, they were looking for more of essentials and we quickly uh, procured and supplied that. So while our quarter one revenues, uh, the mix of essential was almost 18% of our total uh, revenue, uh, total retail revenue at that point of time. But uh, the, uh, the want of customers keeps on changing from time to time and our agility in spotting and supplying that is the key. Uh, is one of the big uh, pillars of our success. So while in quarter one, we saw essentials, but come June, uh, July, uh, they were also looking for like the fashion jewelry was back uh, in traction. Uh, in fact, in quarter two, the mix of essential is low single digit now, but we continue to see uh, greater uh, same momentum as we saw in Q1. So the customers uh, in maybe June, July, were looking for more of uh, outdoor products, garden products, uh, then some bit of traveling also comes into picture, a lot of kitchen appliances because people are more at home, working from home, so uh, experimenting into a lot bit of, a lot of cooking, trying their hands on cooking and, uh, and so on and so forth. They're seeing the kids are at home, more toys. So it keeps on changing, in fact, from week to week, uh, from month to month. And our uh, complete AI-based uh, trend spotting and our agility uh, of uh, development and supplying that is the key to our success. Sure. Um, you know, during this period, of course, there were lots of um, discounts and so forth. I mean, while that's the usual, uh, you know, case as well, there's probably heavy discounting during this time. What's the kind of impact on margins? And, you know, what do you foresee going forward as well for the second half? So while we are a deep discount uh, player, uh, but uh, we command a gross margin of 60% or more, and our vertically integrated supply chain with great geographical cost arbitrage helps us to do that. So we have been able to maintain our gross margin at 60% or more levels across many years now, and that continued during the pandemic as well. So in quarter two, our margin were very close to 63% uh, above the threshold which we want to operate upon. So no concerns in margin uh, at all. In fact, any new product uh, to find a place in our platform needs to first uh, meet this criteria of 60%. Right now, during the last financial crisis where we saw it, you were forced to shut down your brick and mortar stores. How are you adapting to this current crisis? What has been the pivot, the survival strategy for the company? So we, when this crisis hit everyone, we were already into the digital space. So we were into the home shopping and the web shopping model. So which was right for this kind of a scenario. But what we definitely did is like reacted with a larger agility than many other people would have done. So we realized the uh, change in the trends. Uh, we realized uh, the change in consumer behavior what they are looking for at that particular point of time and hence the complete mix of our products also significantly changed in the last two quarters. So while uh, our jewelry, uh, fashion jewelry segment continues to grow, 
in quarter two also it continues to grow year on year but the other non jewelry mix is expanding much faster right now because of this agility in our responses so our non jewelry mix in quarter two in h1 now stands at almost 30 to 30% of our total revenues so we are like fast expanding in health home uh, accessories fashion and beauty products so this agility uh, coupled with our positioning as a deep discount player and our regional vertically integrated supply chain model uh, definitely gives us a lot of confidence in the success of this model even going forward okay fair enough and since the business hasn't been fairly capex intensive uh, does this imply that whatever money that you do make will get added to your books yeah, absolutely so there are two distinct uh, advantages of this model one is uh, we are not cost heavy so the cost below the gross gross margins many of those costs are fixed or stable in nature while they will increase year on year in absolute uh, repeat terms but they will not increase in line with the revenue growth hence a uh, lot of a larger part of the uh, revenue increase flows down to the bottom uh, line which is why the operating leverage uh, we continue to see in the last many years and we expect to see going forward as well so ebitda margin expansion uh, for, uh, has all expanded by almost 200 basis points year on year in this quarter itself another thing which you mentioned was the capex so our industry is not this industry is not capex heavy our routine capex requirement is not much uh, it's about 30 to 35 crores year on a year basis and a large part of that is also into the digital space where we keep on investing for our future growth so uh, that means a large part of the pad even flows down to cash so last two years have been very cash accretive for us and we see the trend continuing going forward our h1 cash flow free cash flow is sitting as 77 crores which is about 42% uh, higher than the last year h1 same time all right uh, thank you so much for taking time out and telling us a little bit more about your strategy how you've been uh, adapting to um, the uh, pandemic as well as the outlook on your business internationally and domestically